Hello watercolorists, Eva Nichols here. Today we're going to have some fun painting some miniatures in watercolor. Alrighty, we're going to do a quick little uh, study of how to paint miniatures. So I already have three little pieces of paper, watercolor paper, and I put a little border around them with some white masking tape that's half an inch wide. And here. Um, so on these two, I have also cut out some masking tape to try and mask up out some uh, tree trunks. Barely see it. There you are. Um, and on this one, and then this one, I'm I'm just gonna go without any masking or anything like that. I'm gonna wet these two pieces first. And one I'm going to do kind of in warm colors. So I have some yellow, some orange, and maybe I'll take a little bit of, I don't want to, I can take a little bit of a French ultramarine blue. Yeah, there we have it. The orange and the blue, they're going to create some uh, neutral shades. And I'm going to take a little bit of cobalt blue up here. And on this other one, I want to go with more wintry colors. So I'm going to grab some opera, opera rose there, some opera rose. And then I'm going to grab some. French, no, this is cobalt. And I'm also going to take some French ultramarine blue there. And I'm going to just wipe down the edges a little bit. Just didn't stay on. And there, it's that. And I'm going to wipe down this one too. And before it starts drying too much, I'm going to take off the masking tape in this one. It's still very wet. There. And the last one. There's that. And then I'm going to just gonna wipe another one down here. I'm gonna wipe some of that off. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a damp brush and I'm just gonna go over like this to create. So I'm kind of integrating the uh, trunks into the background so that they don't look so cut out. You see that? Get a little bit of that color in there. And I'm going to throw a little salt on it. Mainly up here. Let's just do it up here. And then I'm going to do a little bit down in this corner. There we have it. Put that aside. And on this one here, I'm going to try and throw the salt on right away because you can see it's beginning to dry. If I want to get any salt action, I better get it on. So I'm putting a little bit of salt on. Take that away. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to try and take that off. This one, you can see I stuck better to, uh, to the paper, but that's okay. Whatever happens, happens with these little guys. You got to think quick on your feet and uh, just have some fun with it. And just, you know, if it doesn't work out, just, you know, it's just a little tiny piece of paper. It's only five minutes of your time. And hopefully you learn something. That's how I look at these little ones. And I have a lot of fun with them. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Here I might not get as much. Oh, yeah, there's still some something I can drag across. Just that way they look a little bit more natural. 
and there we have it. Still, of course, want to leave a bunch of the white showing. There we go. Let that dry. And then this last little one, get all this sort off. This last little one, we're going to do something else. We are going to wet it. And I'm going to put some French ultramarine blue on. And I think I'm going to put some of this over here in this um, jar. I have some iridescent and some, I think it's uh, Paris blue it's called. It's a color I never paint with. But, you know, those colors I often put in these little jars. And then once in a while, when I need a little extra entertainment, I look at that. Great, I love it. And then my thought was I was going to put some orange in, but I'm kind of feeling maybe I should put some pink in instead because the orange is going to neutralize those blues too much. So let's put some pink in. There we go, a little bit down here. There. And so you can see I did it kind of on a diagonal. I have something going on here. There, got that off. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing. I, I usually like to uh, wipe the edges a little bit, just so that I don't get blooms coming in from the sides as it's drying. And there we have that. And I um, might throw a little bit of salt on that too. Why not? And I think I want to do the salt just in a limited area down here along this line and then see what happens. And I'm going to grab my credit card. Where is it? Here it is. And I'm going to use about a quarter inch, something like that. And I'm going to scrape out some sort of a foreground. Rocks. There. There we have that. Can you see it? And then I think I'll pop it up like this. So gravity is going to push the colors and the salt downwards. So let's pop it up like that. And uh, these two others. They are still processing. Can you see I'm getting some of that salt action? And the same here. So that would be kind of fun to work with later on. And so they will dry. And then I'm going to go back and show you what, how I'm going to finish them. In the meantime, I can show you. Here's one little um, miniature that I made. Um, and here's another little one where I lifted out a moon. Um, so there's a lot of fun things you can do with it. And let me show these here. These are not finished. But can you see here, I used um, the opera rose and the cobalt blue and a little bit of that iridescent. It's a uh, thalo blue, I think it is, iridescent from... Um, I think it's a Da Vinci, but it has an iridescence to it. And then I threw a little bit of salt right down here. So I'm getting something that looks to me kind of like, uh, you know, snow-covered little bushes or something. Um, so, yeah, I have a lot of fun with these little ones. So I have a whole bunch in, pro in progress. And um, while these here dry, I could show you how I finish off these little ones. So first... I live at Lake Tahoe, so uh, my galleries, if I painted Lake Tahoe and especially a place called Emerald Bay all day long, they'd be very happy, but I would be bored to tears, so that's not happening. However, I usually, a lot of my paintings I do put in so that it could be Lake Tahoe. It could also be Lake Erie or Lake Superior or whatever lake you're, li you're living next to or body of water. Um, so I put in a little bit 
of um, a watered down French ultramarine um, with some um, opera rose in it. So there is already, you can see, there is already the distant shoreline. And I have to let that dry just a little bit uh, before I can do anything to it. And put in a little bit of the pink, just doctor it up a little bit. You know, this is not about realism. This is just about, you know, getting a fun painting. Oops, knock that down. Put that up over here. All right, so I'm gonna have to take my little tissue here. You can see it's kind of wanting to run down this way, which I'm not really, really keen on. So I need it to dry a little bit before I can do anything else to it. So here's another one that I did. Look at this, it's blue and yellow, isn't that? So first of all, you have to look at it. I think here I used, um, probably used some uh, of that Paris blue, I think, and with some of that iridescent color. I can see there's a little iridescent on it. And then I used, um, I used uh, a, uh, that new gamboge that's mixed up with a little bit of a transparent yellow. Again, it's you know one of those times where I just use colors that I don't normally use. I'm just keeping an eye on this one because it keeps bleeding down here. Sometimes the color will travel down along the edge of the masking tape I put on. All right, so I have to decide which way, which way does it go? Does it go this way with a yellow sky or does it go this way? Huh, I think I wanted to go this way. You know, again, it's my world, I get to decide. Um, so I am going to um, grab some French ultramarine blue, again, have it toned down a little bit with some opera rose, and then I'm gonna make a little line across here, and Put some distant mountains in. And you know, the paler they are, the more they're going to look like they're far away. So that's perfect. They're kind of disappearing there. Make sure they're not too regular. Yeah. I could actually put a little bit of, I put a little bit of uh, orange in it. Orange and blue as we know, complementary colors. So I think that could be kind of fun. All right, so in the meantime, this one here is beginning to dry. It's not dry yet by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm gonna take a piece of tissue and I'm gonna kind of bundle it up. I'm gonna roll it like this. And then I'm just gonna do one quick, decisive, Press down and take it off. Maybe one more. And that way, I got a little bit of, see, I got like a little texture in the mountains. And uh, I think maybe a little bit more here. There. Don't overdo that. And so then that can, that's back to drying. Um, and this one here, kind of wanted to do the same thing. I can also see it's a little crooked right here. You can uncrook it. There we have it. And roll this up. Do a quick little press down. And I lost the mountains back here. Might have to put them back in again. Put a little bit more of that orange in. And dab it. There. Good enough. Put that aside. 
And um, let's see. I, think, I don't know if this is dry enough. Is it dry enough? Mm, I'm not sure. Anyway, so what I can do here is I can take my little dot bottle. See how it will spray out a dot pattern? Can you see that? It's this bottle. I set dot behind the arrow and it gives a dot pattern. It gives like a droplet pattern instead of a fine mist. And I use it a lot for creating texture. And I want to kind of see if I can save some of that wonderful, see that texture that I got from the salt that looks so, you know, very much like, a, looks very much like a snow pattern or frost on branches or something like that. So I think I'll probably use this brush here. And then I'm going to have to create some um, trees that are sticking out behind those frosty bushes. And so I'm going to use some of my French ultramarine blue. And then I am going to use... I don't know what I'm going to use. Am I going to use a little bit of the transparent yellow? Maybe I am. Let's see. I don't want it too green. Let's see. Blue-green is what I'm after. Of course, that's how they would look. I can even do it over here, doll it down with that. I kind of a little bit of a lavender over there. Okay. I think this could be okay. Let's see. So now, I can't see where I have those droplets. So, you know, I'm after that uneven edge. So I'm going to put in some distant, not, they're not super distant, but they're behind these snow-covered bushes. And a little bit more here. And at some point, I want some of them to overlap the mountain range. So here. Can you see how I'm just dabbing in and I'm just looking at how they spread? And if they're doing a good job, being good little evergreens, I'm making the paint a little bit thicker, or a little bit more blue. It's too green for my taste. Just dab that in. Oh yeah, now we're talking. So I just want to get some of these in, looking like evergreens. Some of them have to go down here. And then here, it should also go over. And you know, it helps if you talk to yourself when you do this stuff. But I'm sure you knew that already. All right, so a little bit bluer here too. Nice if we got another overlap. So it's all about making it nice and irregular and still make sure that you get the shape so that they could be interpreted. Like, uh, and I want to dab in a little bit down here just to indicate that, you know, some of it is showing through there. Dark up here. There. And get that up. This one should probably also overlap. Don't want to cover all that beautiful water up. So there. I think we're pretty good. There. And now, just let it sink in for just a little bit, and then these little dots that I did down here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dab them out a little bit, and also here, you know, I don't want it so dark, so I like to just kind of dab in a little tiny bit. There, and then I think we need to just put a little bit of water down here just so I don't get like a completely hard line the whole way. I want to 
not lose that feeling of the snow that's on those bushes down there. And then it just needs to dry, and then I think that can read really nicely. It's a little lake scene. Just dab a little bit down here. There. Can you see? I think that's good. I think this can work. So we'll pop that up and let that dry. And then let's see. Then we have this one here with the yellow, it has all that blue on it. And as I said, I think it was this blue here. So I'm going to take that and get a little bit of this Paris blue and uh, some of the iridescent in here. That'll work out just fine. And I'm going to just, and then. Probably I'll take a little bit of that. So it's a really dark color. There. There's that. So then you can see I already got a foreground, right? And look at how that is brilliant up against the uh, yellow, like that. So let's just uh, wipe the edges. Let that sink in for just a moment. And while it does that, I could probably go ahead and also create some trees. I'm going to use that same color and a little, little tiny bit green up, but not much. And then uh, let's just put a couple of evergreens in. So now I'm using my dagger brush and so I just like to make a line first so I know where the trunk is and then I'm just kind of dancing the tip of the brush across and down in front you know don't ever do a tree where you can see the whole trunk and then you kind of give it branches on either side it looks not very real again even though we're not after realism but we don't we want things to read right so there's that one little tree that didn't hurt too bad. So we can make another one. So how about a little one here? So let it up against that. And there can be we can have a little brother here. A little brother tree and uh there. And uh we'll have a a taller one here. Get some more looking down there. And now it's connected to those two, which is a good idea. You know, uneven numbers are always better than even numbers. So this one goes down here. And load up my brush again, darken it a little bit. So now I can just dab in. And it goes a little bit. So, you know, I wanted it to be a little bigger than the other one. It's all about uneven, asymmetrical. That reads much better. We can have a couple of little, little reeds sticking up here and there just so it's not such an unbroken line. There. Some stuff sticking up. And now comes the fun part. Credit card. Scrape out that foreground. And there we have it. It's a nice little landscape. Uh, we can darken a little bit in between some of these rocks here, just so break them up a little bit. But usually I don't fuss too much with these things. 
the less you fuss, the better it's going to be. There. Enough. And then let me just show you the most fun part, really, when you do these little ones, is to peel off the masking tape because that really, really sets them off. So it's still wet, so I've got to be careful. But I think I can do it. And uh, you don't want to rip it, so you kind of pull away from the image. Don't pull in this way. It's going to rip when it, it's going to grab some of the edge and possibly rip. So you don't want that to happen. There's this one. And the other one. Make sure I don't smear anything. There. And then this one. And the last one. Here you go. This is where you've got to be careful that you don't rip it. There we have it. Look at that. Doesn't that look cute? Look. Five minute little landscape. Then when I'm done, I sign them down there and then I plot them in a little frame. But these are painted on scrap pieces. You can see I painted on the other side. Scrap pieces of uh, 300 pound uh, arches, cold pressed watercolor paper. Um, so you can also buy some of these little uh, wooden easels. The little tiny ones, and this is paper so stiff that you could just plop it up there, you didn't even have to frame it. It's a cute little gift, and people love them. I can tell you that much.